Okay, so I haven't done a video in a while. Uh, it's short days, you know, doing uh, the holidays and whatever else, but also it's because I've struggled to troubleshoot the automotive lighting, and I wanted to put all that in one video. But I have been working on another project here at home um, with automation of LED lighting and dimming uh, using a method from... Uh, well, it was demonstrated by Juan from beginning from this morning. They're doing a conversion in Phoenix of a GM, uh, 19, I believe, 60s GM bus. Uh, but anyhow, I'll show you what I what I built here as a mock-up for how we're doing the lighting system. Well, I don't know if you can see the spreadsheet, but uh, the refresh rate might be uh, causing flashing, flickering, but I've got a... Uh, a listing of all the lights and controls that I'm going to automate in the bus and uh, that sort of uh, had to be laid out in my mind for zones with microcontrollers first so uh, start with a plan and uh, then uh, I'll show you the mock-up here alright so this is a mock-up of uh, the rear zone in the bus uh, these six lights would be the ones that go over the bed uh, there's going to be a rope light that's on the edge of the bed, this one here. And it will also shine light below the bed into a den area when the bed is raised. We're going to have that on, like I've mentioned before, linear actuators to raise the bed when we're not sleeping in it. And uh, then we've got lights under the bed for shining down on that den area. Then there's going to be a safety light um, by the edge of the den where the steps are going to be. This will actually end up being a Red green or, or yeah, RGB LED, which is multicolor. You adjust the the color with red, green, and blue. Uh, but for now, I've just put a white LED in, in the mock-up. So uh, there's also I've got to figure out the count here. Yeah, there's three lights. Sorry, these three lights are for the below the bed, uh, the safety light, and then this one's going to be at the rear lavatory that's going to pull out underneath the bed in the. Uh, near the den area as a second uh, restroom. So anyhow, I will show you how this is put together, but uh, what we have right here is an ESP32. Uh, this is a 12 volt and 5 volt power supply converter. This unit here I'm just using to generate 12 volts. Punch down terminal, this one is, uh, yeah, this one's the 5 volt terminal, this one's a 12 volt terminal. Then I have right now three MOSFET boards with uh, four MOSFET circuits each. Each of those MOSFETs controls one light. You could actually string lights together. Some people's kids, my son decided to use the ice maker right in the middle of my video. Sorry about that. Um, so I was describing these MOSFET boards. Each one has four circuits. Uh, and I'm controlling these lights individually, although they could be strung together in strings controlled by just one slot so depending on how you want to lay yours out uh, you don't necessarily need as many boards uh, but what this does is it takes a 12 volt input here and it will switch the output on these MOSFETs these are these are the MOSFET chips themselves and they're optically connected to a signal side here uh, and then I've got a I believe it's 5 volt signal that they're supposed to use. I hope so. Hope I don't burn them out. But could could be uh, could be lower. I have to look at the spec. But it's five volts we're using right now. Uh, these are all cheap components. Um, but you're able to connect just one of these on this board because they're tied together for the power side. Then these are signal wires. That when you you write a pin to a high high voltage level here if on this ESP32 in the software. Uh, based on an instruction or a switch or uh, or whatnot, it will activate the power on these. And you can actually do that very rapidly to dim the lights with what's called pulse width modulation. So here's a, a chart of the pins on the ESP32. Uh, this is an Arduino style device, uh, but it also has onboard Wi-Fi and uh, other goodies like Bluetooth and whatnot. We are using the Wi-Fi capabilities. Um, to let this talk to a home assistant server, which I'll show you, uh, that runs on a Raspberry Pi across the room, plugged into my wireless uh, network. Actually, it's actually hardwired to the wireless router. So, uh, anyhow, uh, there's a lot on this chip. Uh, we're using uh, 12 pins right now. 
Um, but I do plan to work with uh, my son who's able to laser print some, or laser cut some acrylic. Uh, we're going to build a, a better way to mount these permanently using these M4 standoffs with two layers of the MOSFETs and then uh, we're going to use a soldered board to hold the wiring and the ESP32 on top uh, and that'll be a more permanent way to mount these inside the bus uh, rather than just using this press board um, to hold things. This is not exactly space conscious so it'll be sort of a about this wide and uh, probably about three inches tall is sort of a, a stacked configuration when we build the permanent setup and there'll be three or four of those in the bus I think actually four um, I'm doing some outside lighting control as well with it so anyhow uh, I will proceed to show you the home assistant software the Raspberry Pi and how all this works from a software perspective and then I'll give you a demonstration of the lighting control all right, so I've got the Raspberry Pi here. I've just created a mock-up of uh, the bus network using an old router we had laying around. Uh, and all these are talking on an isolated network in the house here. Okay, so I've connected to the uh, Home Assistant server here on my browser. Uh, it's locally assigned the address 192.168.1.4. Then you get 8123 as the port number. So to get to it, what you do is you... Uh, you don't need all this stuff. You just get your local IP address for it, which I had assigned on the router based on the Raspberry Pi's MAC address. Uh, layer, layer, uh, I believe that's a layer 2 address. I had it assign that IP address, and uh, that's how come I know what it is. But uh, otherwise, you could just look on your router to figure out which device has what IP in the table. Um, you could also use a local address that's described in the Home Assistant Guide, but this page, you, uh, this page you first come into um, shows the setup from the configurations file. As it currently stands, I have uh, groupings of uh, different light objects in the code. Um, each of those is the uh, an LED. It's a control for those LEDs. Uh, so if we look at the uh, controls here, this is the on off switch and then if I click on the light itself I've got a way to adjust its brightness here with a sliding scale and that uses the pulse width modulation uh, I don't have the lights plugged in right now so uh, but I will demonstrate that before we're done um, so what I had to do was uh, I actually did not use node red which uh, helps you write these configurations files this is a fairly simplified version. Uh, I will probably get into learning Node Red here for other reasons for engine sensors and controlling um, blinds and other automations on the bus that I'll eventually want to do. But uh, for now I just wrote it uh, into the configurations file using a file editor. Uh, you can see here when I click on the file editor um, pardon the refresh here in the video causing it to be crazy. I don't know how to get around that, but uh, if we look at the files here, configuration.yaml, that shows all the configuration here, including defining these lights. Uh, so if we go into this, I can scroll down and show you. We've got the lights all defined in this file with their various parameters and names and, and so on. Here we have different MQTT topics. You'll see platform is MQTT. Uh, it's the name in MQTT. And then the state topic is whether the light's on and off. The command topic is to turn the light on or off. And this is the brightness state, which is what is the brightness value from 0 to 255. And then the command topic is what to set the brightness to based on the controls. Uh, these other things have meanings in the MQTT protocol and um, I don't fully understand them myself, so I can't explain them. I haven't really delved that deep other than to make it work. Uh, so you don't have to be an expert to use this stuff. Um, but anyway, I've got these lights defined in this file. And then we're going to go to the other file. This is what makes that main screen happen. This is the groups file. And this is where I group them according to uh, what room they're in. Bedroom lights, that, that can be controlled all from one switch 
or individually in den lights, safety lights, and then lavatory controls. I'll eventually have here, you'll see, a switch for the rear toilet fan. That'll be for a composting toilet 12 volt uh, control. It'll usually be on. I may even group it with a different set of controls before I'm done. Um, but uh, that's the idea there. And then I probably will also, outside of the home assistant, I'm going to set up on the microcontroller a metal capacitive touch input to uh, stir the composting toilet with a power, uh, with a motor of some sort. I don't know if I'm going to be building my own composting toilet yet or buying a nature set or airhead. Either way, though, I'll want the uh, mechanism to stir the composting toilet to be a push button for convenience sake rather than to have to get down on the floor and crank a handle. So anyhow, um, that's the home assistant end of this. And uh, I had to you look in supervisor here. I think it's, it's a supervisor. I can't recall. I'm going to show you uh, add-ons. <clears throat> the add-ons, I had to install this MQTT broker as part of the code. Um, and then the code that we put on the microcontroller over here, the ESP32 microcontroller, that was flashed uh, on a USB cable from the Arduino in an uh, integrated development environment, which is an IDE. Uh, and then this is the code for that. Uh, so we've included libraries here, including the PubSub client, which is associated with the MQTT server. This is for debugging. Uh, here we've defined constants, including the different passwords and whatnot for Wi-Fi and for MQTT. And then here we've to find other constants. This is the names of the topics that are going to be subscribed to um, for the MQTT, for the messaging. So we've got those all defined. Going through those. And I know this code works. It's already been put onto the, the demonstration here. Uh, and then I have not yet added topics for stirring the toilet or the fan or any of that. So I'll edit that later. But uh, we've defined on and off as variable names here. Uh, here we've uh, defined some variables to pull in the messaging states uh, from MQTT into the program. Um, and then we've set default value of 255 for brightness. The first time this turns, you turn on the system, uh, it assumes a zero value for some reason. So we had to define those in the code. Uh, so that when we hit the on-off switch, the lights actually turn on uh, with this dimming feature. Uh, and then you, then you change the dimming from there. Here we're defining the pins. Be aware on the ESP32 that you've got 16 pulse width modulation capable pins. Um, but you, you have to know which ones, or I'm sorry, channels for pulse width modulation. But only certain pins are capable, and that's these numbers here. I made it. A, I had to debug it a little bit. I had all the pins to find on one side of the chip, and some of those were not pins that could do pulse width modulation. So I had to had to troubleshoot that. And it all's well that ends well. I would find uh, pin names and numbers here, and those are the pins on the on the microcontroller, and uh, some comments here to help you know remember what I did. Uh, and then I associate those pins with the channels for pulse width modulation. There's 0 through 11 here. And then here's a uh, code that I borrowed from Juan among a lot of this code um, from beginning from this morning. I had to work from what he did, and uh, my son helped me a little bit with the, the function we're going to see coming up to bring in the information from MQTT. Um, but Anyhow, uh, this serial begin is actually to capture messaging in the serial monitor in the Arduino IDE when you're troubleshooting the code. Um, but here we've defined the pin modes and we've attached those pins to the pulse width modulation capability in the ESP32. So we've had to say attach for all those. Keep going down here. And here we're defining uh, other pin modes for the pins I'm going to use in the future for other things, including an input for that touch sensor. 
Here we set up the Wi-Fi connection from the ESP32. And here we subscribe to the various topics from the MQTT broker for the on-off state, the on-off switching, the uh, brightness state uh, value, and the brightness changes. Uh, so each of those lights has its own subscription topics. And then here, um, this is just messaging for debugging. That's Wi-Fi setup. Now here's the callback function. This is the guts of the program right here. What it does is it says for a given topic, um, the payload of that topic or the message needs to be uh, needs to be concatenated into a string uh, called payload string. And then from here, we are comparing those strings um, to uh, the name of the uh, first to the topic name to make sure that the string is associated with the right variable. So it's saying compare the topic that came in with this topic and uh, if it matches write it to this variable name and then run another routine to set the state of the light according to uh, according to that variable change or that whatever happened to that variable uh, whether it was on off or a brightness value. Um, so this, these are a bunch of if statements associated with reading that information and then running the routine to make the change. So that is the guts of the program. Uh, it goes on for quite a while. It goes on for each light. I'll get to the end of that here soon. It's just a repeat for each light of the same if statements. And I think we're coming toward the end of this. And then this is an analog write function. Um, and what it does is it creates the pulse width modulation configuration. So uh, it's got what's called a duty cycle, which has to do with how long the power is going to be pulsed and how frequently uh, that controls the brightness. And uh, this is a sort of a mathematical translator um, between the uh, the controls and what the chip can do. Um, and this came directly out of Juan's code, so most of this is actually from from Juan, thanks to his uh, groundbreaking or tra trailblazing on this whole project, because I didn't know what I was doing before I started this. I played a little bit with Arduinos, but I just basically made an LED light turn on and back off. It was a three-line program. Uh, so if I can do this, you guys can too. Uh, but anyhow, uh, that function is called the, here's the set light state that you saw called from the other subroutine. And what it does here is uh, runs through the various lights and it sets the state. And then uh, it uses those values like uh, the brightness that came out of uh, the rest of the code above. And then if we get down to the bottom here, it's going to recall a program called or a subroutine called publish light state. And what that does is it puts a message back out on MQTT to tell the uh, home assistant what the state of the light is uh, as far as its on or off condition. So it's sort of a feedback loop to uh, to home assistant. And I think I could be wrong, but I think that's yeah, that's the end of the program. So that's what is on. Uh, what was used to code the uh, the uh, microcontroller? I took a lot of troubleshooting to get it right, but uh, all is well that uh, that ends well. Um, so that is the code aspects of of this project. Now I'm going to do a demonstration for you guys. Okay, so you can see in the controls here in Home Assistant, which are also available on my phone in an app um, where I set the server. IP address and so on. Uh, same same kind of thing is available in the phone. I'd show it to you, but I can't film with my phone while showing you something on my phone. Um, so anyhow, uh, you toggle these switches. We've got lights over here that are not on. Uh, if I hit the switch here, we've got all the bedroom lights coming on at once. You'll notice they're exceptionally bright right now because uh, that code 
said to set them to 255 for the brightness value. Um, and then we've got the other groupings here. We've got the uh, what I'm calling the den below the bed. Uh, those lights came on, those three lights, or four lights. And we've got the safety light, which is an additional light. And then the, the rear lavatory light. So quite bright right now. But what we can do is let me uh, demonstrate this with the light string. I'll shut everything off. And then we'll focus just on the light string. I'm going to turn it on so you can see the brightness. And then as I pull this up, I can do this, uh, yeah, I should be able to capture both at the same time. I can make the lights very dim, a little bit brighter. This is with the sliding scale here. Now you'll start to hear a hum. That's actually coming from this unit, which will not be part of the equation. This fan does not like the pulsing of the current. Uh, it's got some sort of a, a hum going on, but that will not be part of the final system. And we've got the lights brightened up a bit. Some more. But, you know, I've got basically a lot of granularity here with how bright or dim I can make the lights. So we're going to shut this one off. And then I'll show you with one of the LED lights how the brightness will work. And if you do just set the brightness, it turns the light on as well. So we can see over here, as I increase the brightness, We're going to take it all the way back down. So the idea of having individual control is so that uh, if somebody's reading a book in bed on one side, you're not creating too much light for the other person. You know, having that granularity sets the mood and temperament. And one of the cool things about Home Assistant is when I have all the sensors set up, I can create what are called scenes, which might be like it's bedtime or waking up or, you know, you know, maybe it's time to watch a movie and we can have predefined settings that will do things like uh, set the lighting inside the bus at the right level for that activity, uh, maybe put the blinds in the right position, etc. Um, and it'll likely go further than that with uh, other automations as well. Things like shutting off power below the bus uh, and so on. I'm also going to be wiring. Um, I'll show you here using using AC here we are these are uh, AC relays I've got like six of them I'm going to be wiring certain outlets uh, in the bay and other places um, to be able to be turned on and off in software uh, this takes the input as DC at the bottom and you can run AC power at the top so these will be very handy for other things but at this point I've got a bunch of LED lights um, I've got, you know, a bunch of MOSFET boards, and I know how to do this. I've just got to, you know, build the permanent setups for inside the bus, uh, which, uh, which will be all uniform. It'll be four of these boards with one ESP32 kind of bundled together uh, with a couple of boards for expansion if I want to do something else with them. Uh, and then maybe some standard relays, which are like a MOSFET board, but less complicated. Um, they're simple on off. They don't have the uh, they don't have the speed of turning on and off like a MOSFET does, so that you can pulse width modulate. But um, anyhow, that is the setup. It's what I've been up to in part. But uh, the biggest reason I haven't put a video out in a long time is because I'm troubleshooting the wiring right now. I've got my turn signals won't work, and I want to have one wiring video uh, where I put the automotive lighting together. Um, you know, doing that as one video from start to finish. So sometimes things take things take more time, and the weather and you know dark dark days have not helped. And the last thing I want to say about this project is it may look complicated, but it's definitely kind of fun to do, and isn't all that hard if you take it step by step. Uh, so I'd encourage you to go to beginning from this morning's blog posting and get your own materials from his links, and uh, you know help him out as an Amazon affiliate. And then build up your own uh, your own setup uh, like this, and just play with it. It's uh, 
it's just kind of cool stuff to play with and there's all kinds of possibilities with it pretty much anybody can automate anything with this inexpensive technology uh, for example that is about seven dollars maybe 750 on amazon these boards are about 10 bucks a piece these lights are about 30 bucks for six you know so you know it's not all that expensive to to play around with this stuff so have at it